In our last lecture, we looked at this young boy named Bob. Bob was born to an uh, unmarried mother, never knew his father. Mother had uh, addiction issues, lived with grandmother, um, did not do well in school. In fact, I just read this in the New York Times. Some eighth grade girl from New York City wrote this. Listen to what she said. Can you imagine getting published in the New York Times in eighth grade? Oh my gosh. This is what her first paragraph said. Talking out of turn, destroying classroom materials, disrespecting teachers, blurting out answers during class tests, students pushing, kicking, hitting one another, and even rolling on the ground. This is what happens in my school every single day. I'm afraid Bob is one of those kicking and throwing around per guys. Now he's not malicious or mean in any way. He's a nice guy. He just hangs with the wrong crowd and he likes to be the class clown. So uh, school didn't go well for him and he dropped out of high school his junior year. And gets a girl pregnant before the uh, 18. Now, if you say, Mr. Horn, <coughs> that's, that's, that's black culture. I would say, uh, I wouldn't say that. That sounds a bit r racist to me. Now, uh, let's go back to 1964, Patrick Moynihan and the Moynihan Report. Patrick Moynihan says the, the problem with uh, poverty amongst blacks, amongst the Negro, I think he probably used that term, is uh, the breakdown of family and that was caused by slavery, he says. Now, <clears throat> it's a great research paper topic, the Moynihan Report, but um, t two things to think about. First, I would love to see what the... Uh, black family structure looked at like in 1900. I'll bet you it was much better than it was in 1964 and more poor. And then of course we now know that the white poverty family structure is exactly the same. Uh, family breakup is actually much worse now amongst the white poor than it was in 1964. But I want you to listen to this now. This is coming from the Black Lives Matter website, and this is what we believe. Listen to what they say uh, as I read this to you. We disrupt the Western prescribed nuclear family structure requirement. I think they're saying we dislike, we're going to break it up. And one more time. We disrupt the Western prescribed nuclear family structure requirement by supporting each other as extended families and villages that collectively care for one another, especially our children, to the degree that mothers, parents, and children are comfortable. So first thing, maybe they're just saying we accept it, uh, life as it is on the ground, I don't know, but th I don't think that's right. I think you should be telling everyone, hey everyone, uh, finish high school. Do not have babies before you get married. Uh, try to stay married. Try not to get divorced. I got divorced. So I'm not. I'm just saying, try not to get d divorced, and tr 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 try to get a job. Uh, isn't that what we should be saying? We're not villages. These aren't v v villages. We're not in some patriarchal village society where uh, we have a, a chief married to many wives. This is not how we do it in America and maybe Black Lives Matter, which, by the way, I don't think most black folk are going to dig this, this strange thing. Um, so the question is, well, let me, let, let, let's, let, before we finish, I'm about to conclude. I don't think 
that there's a special black culture that causes the, the disruption, the, 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 the distinction between white and the blacks. I think it's a, 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 a culture of poverty. Now the question is, and I guess I would turn the question on its head maybe and say, look, black people have been slaves uh, for 250 years, after which they were living as second-class citizens for 100 years. Let's say 1970 is when uh, black people started to uh, unshackle from the, the great uh, discrimination of the past. Are we expecting uh, that in 50 years uh, that blacks and whites would be exactly the same? Maybe we're, we're expecting too much. Maybe this takes another 50 years. Uh, maybe this is something that happens incrementally. I don't n know. Uh, I want you to listen to this, though. So, do you believe this? Here's my question. The United States of America was created by the Founding Fathers to create a slaveocracy. And even today, the political, social, and economic systems are racist, or at least shot through with racism. Because remember, I had said, I don't think we should say that black people are not as smart as white people. I think it's a politically incorrect thing to say, whether it's t true or not. I would say, whether this is t t true or not, that's not how we want to teach people. We don't want to tell you to people, hey, there's a, by if you're black, everything's stacked against you. Race, social, economic, political, it's all stacked against you. Do we want to say, hey, if you're black, go out and vote? Yes. If you're white, go out and vote. I don't think there's a black or white reason to go out and vote. It's everyone should be going out and and. and are we saying that black people do, do not see uh, America through a different lens than white people? They don't experience it? And I'm not saying that. I'm sure that's true. That's what I've heard from black folk. That seems to be true, I would guess. Do you think that there is no injustice, no racial injustice in America? I don't believe that either. I think there are oftentimes cases uh, of racial injustice. Do you think that structural racism is the thing that keeps the blacks and the whites separated by wealth and all those things? And the answer is, I don't think that's true. And even if I thought it was true, I wouldn't preach it. I think we got to preach that, hey guys, uh, work hard. You can do well. That's what you want to pr preach. That's just me, though.